welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, AstroVentures. Welcome back. If you're new to this astrophotography channel, my name is George, and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Skygetter Pro or the Star Adventurer. Now, uh, recently I'd released the video for the upcoming comet, and that would be C2023. A3, T Atlas, as I call it, uh, because I don't want to try and butcher that name. But anyway, after that video came out, some of our mates from down under reached out. Okay, truth be told, one from Australia. I don't know where the other person was in the Southern Hemisphere. But they uh, reached out asking about, you know, would these times uh, match up for us here in the Southern Hemisphere? And I told them that I would go ahead and do a video for them, for the Southern Hemisphere, and what it's looking like. So, let's get started here. Um, I have decided to center myself up on Brisbane, Australia. Sorry if it's Brisbane or however it's enunciated, I apologize for that. Uh, but anyway, I've decided to use Brisbane, Australia. It would be at south 27 degrees or negative 27 degrees. And with that, we're going to go ahead and track it. Now, looking through this, I found that the earliest point that you might be able to start picking up this comet is going to be uh, September 19th. And I'm looking at about 5.03 in the morning. Now, with that... Uh, Here's what we got going on is one, the comets here, you could see the glow of the sun and then just to jump over and search real quick over to the moon, you could see here we have the moon at 99.6% uh, roughly, 99% <laughs> um, illumination, but you can see it's not that far uh, from the horizon and realistically, the fact that we have the sun as close as it is, the moon's really not going to be a player. The sun is going to be the part that's the player. And it's going to be kind of one of those things where uh, because of the sun being there and the comet being between the sun and the earth, there is the chance if things go, you know, as to all the hype, um, the tail coming off of this comet should light up nice and strong and catch that light. So even though the sun is rising, we should be able to get a nice tail off of this. But, you know, again, comets are a crapshoot and we'll see what happens with it. But anyway, the earliest point that I am suggesting that I, I, I think uh, from doing my Southern Hemisphere research is I think uh, September 19, 5.03 in the morning, uh, it's going to get the comet up at about 10 degrees in the eastern sky and you might be able to get it there now moving forward let's jump forward to the 26th now on the 26th i'm going to adjust this time to 441 in the morning and again this is a game of Trying to balance everything. Okay, whoops, let me back that up. <clears throat> Wrong direction. There we go. 441, September 26th, okay? And at this point here, the moon is going to be up. Let's jump over here to the moon. And there you see it. But the moon at this point is only going to be 39%. And the other thing is, is with the moon being at 39%, um, you really shouldn't have any problem with picking up the atlas at this point. So this should start to be some, some good stuff on top of the fact that the 
um, you know, we're sitting at 10 degrees, but with the backlighting, uh, or they call it forward scattering of the light into the comet tail, and we're just about at perihelion, we're about a day away at this point, this should really, around the 26, 27, 28, should really give some uh, excellent opportunities for uh, imaging the comet. On the 27th, and I'm going to be sticking with about 441 for quite a bit. You can see the moon is over here. I'll slide this around just a little bit. You can see the moon's over there. But here on the 27th, the moon illumination is dropping to 29%. And again, with that forward scattering of light, the back illumination of the comet tail, this should be really good. And then uh, jumping forward to the 28th, again, we're still sitting at about an altitude of 10 degrees in the sky. The moon is down a little bit closer to the comet. However, on the 28th, our illumination off of the moon is dropping to 20%. So it's really not going to be any kind of a factor at this point here. Then the uh, 29th, here we go. Stay, again, I'm staying at this time of 441 in the morning. Our altitude, again, sitting at 10 degrees. Uh, it seems that here in the southern hemisphere, it lingers at that 10 degree point uh, a bit longer than it does in the northern hemisphere for us. So here it is on the 29th, and we're looking at a 12.7% illumination and sitting at that 10 degree point. Moving forward to the 30th of the month, uh, at this point here, the the uh, the moon's illumination is down to 6.97% illumination. So there's not much, and we're still sitting at that 10 degree altitude. And so with this, you know, we're, we're still, you know, very close to that whole perihelion point and that forward scattering of light. So this should again continue to be some nice imaging opportunities. Here we go, October 1st. On October 1st, again, we're still sitting in an altitude of approximately 10 degrees, although you can see here we're starting to make that dive downward, okay? So, starting to happen. Uh, the moon is really not a factor here on October 1st. We're talking 2.8%, so that's you know really nothing there. Uh, here we go, October 2nd. Uh, we don't have a moon, you know, sticking with my time of a 441 although i'm gonna play with this a bit and what i'm wondering is because i want to get this up a little bit here's the point where this is getting a little tough and if we are getting some nice lighting some nice forward scattering lighting the uh, tail could illuminate well but i'm going to adjust the time to 445 here and i'm nearing that point where you know well actually this is the last point for those morning comet imaging and now i'm thinking at this point here it's time to jump forward in the month to october 16th okay the 16th and now we're going to be moving to a night comet and so we're going to be working off of 14, 15 16 17 18 and one in eighteen forty. Okay, there you can see the moon rising in the eastern sky. However, the comet has now moved to an evening comet. Okay, so here we go. On October 16th, and at this point here, we're sitting at an azimuth of about 11 degrees above the horizon. We do have a 99% illumination behind us, uh, but... You know, I don't really think it's going to be that much of a factor. And the fact that we've got this forward scattering light coming into the tail. I don't think the moon's going to hurt us as much as we might think for some other astrophotography, you know, um, targets. So moving forward, let's see here. The uh, 16th, moving on to the 17th. And again, I'm going to stick with this 1840 time. Uh, our altitude is climbing up. We're at 14 degrees now. And then again, our moon, just to show you here, let's jump over to the moon. Here we come back around, you can see it there. And here on the 17th, the illumination, you know, we're sitting at approximately 100%, you know, and that's because we're just at the full moon. However, again, it's on the opposite side. 
and if we get that forward scattering of light, I really don't think it's going to uh, hurt us as much as we might fear. Okay, so jumping back around. Here we go on the 18th. You can see the comet is rising up in the sky. Here we're at uh, 16 degrees above on the 18th. We're still, uh, you know, 99% illumination. Uh, but again, I don't think it's going to be a factor here on the 19th. We're jumping up to an altitude of 19 degrees. This is where, um, you know, depending on what your horizon line looks like, the possibility of smog, just the thickening in the atmosphere. Here at 19, per, uh, 19 degrees altitude, you know, we're going to be starting to get into a better place relative to the thickness of the uh, atmosphere there. And then with this, just to show you for the moon, here we go, jumping around. And you can see the moon's not a factor for us. It hasn't risen yet. So that's outstanding. And where the comet is sitting altitude wise, you know, this could really, you know, depending on how much the moon does end up affecting things, this could be a, a, another, you know, really sweet date to uh, mark down. Moving forward here, October 20th, again, climbing up altitude, we're at 21 degrees. Moon's not a factor, 21st. Uh, moon's not a factor, and let's see here, 22 degrees for altitude, 22nd, altitude at 24 degrees. This is where that altitude, you know, for myself, where I am, you know, uh, I really need things up to be around 24 degrees to get out of the, the thickening of the atmosphere, pollution, all of that good stuff. So again, something to keep in mind. And, you know, still, the moon is not going to be a factor for us. There you go. You're staring through the Earth. So that's absolutely awesome. And uh, let's jump back to the comment. And then what I'm thinking here, jumping through 23rd, 24th, 25th, you do see that you've got, um, you know, a little bit lingering long, you know, because the southern hemisphere is going, um, you know, is still is in their summer, you know, or spring going into summer. So the sun is getting brighter. However, this getting higher in the in the sky, I'm hoping, I'm thinking this will probably still be uh, something imageable. And then you'll just kind of have to decide as to whether or not you pursue and how long you pursue. Because with each day, you know, you can play with this a little bit. Let's see here. You know, here... As you can see, I'm bringing it to 1900, getting the altitude down to 23 degrees. But again, this could give you a good opportunity. So um, I think 1840 looks to be a good start time for your evening shooting. And then just shoot and watch, you know, as the evening goes on and see what develops until, uh, you know, it climbs too low into the uh, thicker atmosphere. So uh, this particular, you know, uh, YouTube video here, like I said, it's, um, you know, for some of our friends in the Southern, Alt Southern uh, Hemisphere. And, uh, you know, here you go, guys. And thanks for, uh, you know, reaching out and asking. And I think you guys probably get forgotten down there in the Southern Hemisphere. So there you have it. So I would love to see uh, whatever you guys capture down there in the Southern Hemisphere. I'd love to see that over on Astro Venture DSLR, our Facebook group. And uh, if you like what you're seeing here, consider liking, subscribing, ringing the bell, and sharing the videos out. So until next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.